Today on RBA Grooves, we'll talk to Stoner Winslet and Maggie Small about how the Richmond Ballet is influencing dance in the region and across the globe. Then we'll head to the Canal Walk and Canal Cafe to chat with owner Jeff Austin. And we'll catch up with Jennifer Jules Hart as she visits with the talented artist Hamilton Glass at one of his beautiful murals. And we'll end the show with a super performance from the New Orleans funk jazz band Big Sam's Funky Nation. RBA Grooves starts right now. I'm in RVA Grooves where we celebrate all things arts and culture. I'm standing outside of the beautiful Richmond Ballet Studios. They have so many things to offer. Not only are they a studio company, but they also offer classes and they're also in the community. We're going to go inside and talk about how they have made an impact on the city of Richmond nationally and internationally. Let's go on inside. Kelly Lemon, RVA Grooves, where we celebrate all things arts and culture, standing in the beautiful studios of the Richmond Ballet, here with one of the dancers of the company, Maggie Small. Maggie, talk about uh, your involvement with Richmond Ballet and how long have you been dancing? Um, I've been dancing since I was about three years old, and I started in school here at the Richmond Ballet, and I just sort of rose through the ranks and was a trainee and an apprentice, and now I'm in the full company. And I also did the Minds in Motion program when I was in middle school, which was another great facet that we still work with as a member of the full company. Mm -hmm. So my main part at the ballet is dancer. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think this whole arts and culture movement would take this big boom in, not only in the city of Richmond, but in the state of Virginia? Oh, I'm just so glad to be a part of it. I mean, I always thought that I would dance and I'm so lucky to be able to do it here in my hometown. My family's here and it's so much easier to do it with that kind of support. And I'm just so great that the Richmond area in Virginia has really embraced the arts because we've got a lot to offer. Both that's what we're making here in these studios. Yeah, now Richmond Ballet is not only getting just Richmond exposure and state exposure, national exposure, and you guys also got to travel overseas. Talk a little bit about that experience. We did, we performed in London at the Underground Theater in Covent Garden, which was just unreal. Like every day something extraordinary happened, and we kept thinking tomorrow can't be more exciting, mm -hmm. and, and then it was. Mm -hmm. We performed, and the audiences were really receptive, and they loved it, and all the reviews have come in great. Not that reviews really matter, but mm -hmm. it's nice to know it was appreciated, mm -hmm. so. Little girls that want to get involved with dance, do you get a chance, an opportunity to go out and talk, talk to them, and then what kind of advice are you giving them? Um, sometimes we teach, and so we get to talk to them then, so you can instill the knowledge that we've been given, because it's a word of mouth sort of art, mm -hmm. um, and then also with the mind in motion we go out into the schools and we actually reach kids that might not necessarily know they want to dance which is really exciting to talk to them um, what else do you guys have coming up what you know what's what's in the future I know that uh, your season is about to start so talk about what you guys are going to perform next um, we just started our season so we're rehearsing a bunch of different things right now we're working on streets and legends which we'll be performing in our September studio series which happens right here in this building we actually convert these studios into a theater and it's um, a very intimate theater so the audience sits really closely which a lot of people really like um, and with that we'll be performing Gargoyles, which we just started working on today. It's a new work with Philip Neal. Um, we've only worked on it an hour, so I don't really have a lot to say about it, yeah. but it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, well we look forward to seeing your performances in the future and congratulations and good luck to you. Kelly Lemon, RVA Groove, standing here with Malcolm Byrne. He is the ballet master. That's right. I got that right. <laughs> All right. With the Richmond Ballet Company, we saw you in here practicing with the company a little bit earlier. Talk about your role here. Well, my I have a very difficult job. Okay. I have to stand here every day and watch very beautiful people do very beautiful things. And um, it's a difficult job, but somebody has to do it. And I'm so glad that you're doing <laughs> it. <though. laughs> no, actually, I basically coach, I teach, um, advise, and help. In the old way of being a ballet master, you took care of the dancers every need. Health, health uh, you make sure they're all good, they're not injured, etc., etc. But also, uh, you coach, you teach, I choreograph a little for them, and um, basically it's just 
as I say, it's a difficult way to make a living. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now the piece that they're working on today, how long have they been doing that piece and, and how, you know, typically how long are you with them when they're practicing? I'm with them every day. Yeah. Every day, uh, at least six or seven hours a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been working on this piece. Funny enough, we started to do it before they went on break for the summer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we put a couple of days in there and we've done it for a couple of days now and what you've seen is basically two days back the dancers have come back and we've put back together this piece, this wonderful Scottish rock and roll piece. You've seen the Scottish side of it, there's another half of it that goes with it that's Scottish rock and roll that's quite stunning. The girl on the rock, the black box is portraying a rock, the girl on the rock interesting enough is standing at a sea uh, at a rocks overlooking the ocean oh, and the dancers are actually being part of the ocean which is got it interesting got it got it now what how long have you been dancing or you know and, and are you from the richmond virginia area no i'm from new zealand okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm really from the south yeah <laughs> um but the um i've been here for 25 years okay and I've been dancing a long, long time yeah. before that. I, I danced for 25 years mm -hmm. uh, and um, luckily ended up here, which is, a, as you can see, a fabulous studio, fabulous place and fabulous people to work with. Yes. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and continued success on your upcoming season. Thank you. All right. We're standing in the beautiful Richmond Ballet Company. I'm standing with the founding artistic director of the professional company, Stoner Winslet. Thank you for taking the opportunity to talk to us, Stoner. Oh, it's my pleasure. Talk a little bit about the Richmond Ballet and how it has kind of just influenced this arts and culture movement that is going on, not only in the city, but also in the state of Virginia. Well, it's particularly exciting for me because I'm starting my 33rd season here. And when I first came to the Richmond Ballet, there were no paid dancers in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And working with wonderful partners like Brett Bonda, our managing director, and a lot of our trustees in the community, we have built an organization that is literally recognized internationally now as a professional ballet company and school and education program. Many facets of the Richmond Ballet. I mean, it's just not, um, you know, you come and see the company perform. You also teach classes and you work within the community. Talk about those areas. That's correct. I mean, our mission is to uplift and awaken the human spirit through dance, mm -hmm. and that is through performances, training, education, and integrity. And the professional company performs a wonderful season here at home. You can see us perform in the Studio Theater or in the Carpenter Theater or around um, as the State Ballet of Virginia on tour. Um, but we also perform um, in New York City at the Joyce Theatre and we performed recently at Covent Garden at the Royal Opera House in London and have had a wonderful success there. We were very flattered to be ambassadors for all Richmonders across the ocean. Mm -hmm. But many of the dancers in the company were trained at our school which is called the School of the Richmond Ballet mm -hmm. and it's right here at 407 East Canal Street and we train um, young folks from age three to seven and an invitation to the dance class and then we have intensive ballet training that can train you to a professional level like our Maggie Small who's on the cover of Dance Magazine this fall um, and we also train adults but our outreach program is actually not in our building at 407 East Canal we go into 18 to 22 it depends on the year um, elementary schools in the Richmond area and do a fourth grade program there called Minds in Motion. All right. Now, this boom has happened with arts and culture in the city of Richmond. And like I said, you've been here 33 years. And so you have seen how the city has kind of gotten behind, whether it's food, dance, um, also in the museums that are popping up. Talk about the collaboration and how that benefits Richmond Ballet. Well, it's wonderful to exist in a greater, more vibrant arts community, and you're right. I have over 30 years seen that community grow, and I think that um, institutions either moving or staying downtown is so great for the city. Mm -hmm. I know it was very hard for us when we moved from our Lombardy location to decide where to go, and we thought, we are the Richmond Ballet we are going to stay in Richmond. And we now own and operate a whole city block downtown and we like to think we've been a good thing for the neighborhood and we know being down here with the other arts organizations and museums has been good for us. How are you getting your money for Richmond Ballet? Oh yes, we're a not-for-profit organization and our um, money comes from earned income, which is um, admissions mm -hmm. and tuition to the school. And every time you buy a ticket, you help Richmond Ballet keep going. And we love to see you in the audience as well. And that helps us keep us going. Then there's also contributed income that comes from corporations, foundations, individuals, and government. Mm -hmm. And we invite people who like our work 
to um, give through whatever method is most convenient for them. Right. Any website that you want to give out that helps with that? <laughs> www.richmondballet.com. You can pop it right up or you can call us on the telephone or better yet, come to 407 East Canal and see us. Thank you, Stoner, for taking the time to talk to me. A beautiful facility and I hope that the Richmond community gets to you know, give and give back to you guys a little bit more as we are embracing this all arts and culture that is popping up throughout Richmond. So thank you for taking the time. Thank you for having us. RVA Grooves will be right back. Lemon RVA Grooves, all things arts and culture. Recently, we were walking through the Canal Walk doing some filming for uh, another episode, and we stumbled across this great cafe and had breakfast. So we had to come back and talk to owner Jeff Austin about his cafe and the art and culture movement that might be going on in your restaurant, too. So, Jeff, Canal Cafe, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. No problem. Thanks for coming in. Talk a little bit about your restaurant and how you got started. Um, me and my father decided that uh, we wanted to open a little sandwich shop. We uh, had a coffee stand on Broad Street, decided uh, that this was a great place to be a part of uh, the revitalization of downtown Canal Walk and stumbled upon the space and got a pretty good deal and decided to open shop. Now, the Canal Walk is getting a lot of, as you said, revitalization because they're also putting apartments and the art is coming down here. Um, you guys are also involved with this movement. You got art in the restaurant. Talk about how that art affects the restaurant's um, style. You know, we tried to give uh, a place for local artists to showcase some of their work. I was very fortunate to have a few friends that, that do uh, some very nice work and they were generous enough to donate some pieces to let us decorate our walls with. Uh, I think it's a good idea to give local artists a venue that they don't have to pay for to showcase their work. So who is your customer on, the, on a daily basis? Like who comes in to, to, to frequent you guys? A lot of European tourists actually <laughs> um, take advantage of the Canal Walk and the Civil War History Center. Uh, met people from Germany, Switzerland, England, France. Uh, it's been interesting and very, very fun to be here um, watching the canal grow. We talked a little bit about the fact that you do showcase artwork in your cafe. Talk about these artists. Are they all local? They are all from Richmond. Uh, behind me is Adam Goldsmith. He uh, specializes in natural photography here in Richmond. Um, he has a really cool technique, as you can see. He takes 360-degree kaleidoscope photos, uh, leads them together, and mounts them. I saw him actually at the Forest Hill Farmer's Market and asked him if he'd be interested in showcasing comes in about every couple of months and puts up some new pieces and, and kind of we've given him this wall. It's uh, uh, unofficially Adam's wall. Yeah. How often do you change the artist in here or is it a hit or miss if they come and they eat and they say, hey, I want to put my stuff up, Jeff, do you allow them to do that? Pretty much. It's yeah. kind of, hey, everybody that I've found, I've been fortunate enough to kind of stumble across and say, hey, you know, I got some space, come check it out. And they try to rotate about every month or two. They come up with some new pieces, take some down. Uh, we have been featuring the same artist for a few months now, but we do continually get new pieces in. Talk a little bit about your menu. I know you serve breakfast because we've already had it here, but talk about everything else. We do American classic cold cut sandwiches, uh, pretty much in a grown up version of a brown bag lunch. We do as much as we can in house. Our coffee is roasted right here in town by Carytown Coffee. We do fresh baked muffins and cookies. Um, everything is made to order. We do catering as well, and I will deliver to anywhere within the greater Richmond area. How do people get in contact with you? Facebook? Facebook, Twitter, website. Uh, I'm on Facebook. I have a website, canalcaferva.com, and our phone number is 804-303-3345. All right, and last but not least, if I wanted to come in and, and, and visit, where are you located? We're in the Troutman Sanders building on Haxel Point, uh, right on Browns Island, 10th Street all the way south, and park in the deck. All right. Well, thanks for taking the time, Jeff, to talk to RVA Grooves. We wish you a lot of success. It's time for us to go eat. Now let's catch up with Jennifer Jules Hart as she visits with the talented muralist Hamilton Glass. Hey, this is Jennifer Jules Hart with RVA Grooves, where we celebrate all things arts and culture. I'm with Ham today, who is one of the featured artists at RVA Grooves, and today we're going to check out one of his amazing murals. How are you doing today? 
doing great. Doing great. So this mural was part of a mural project, which was the RVA Street Art Festival. They brought in 19 artists from around the country, a few local. Tell me a bit about that event and how, how that worked. The RVA Street Art Festival was an amazing event featuring three local artists and a couple other really big name artists from all over the, the country that just came here to do live murals. And they're all, you can find them all over Shaco Bottom, Richmond? Correct. Um, how long did it take you guys to paint this? How, how was it working? I would say it was about four days. Uh, the public came and watched for actually all of them, but uh, the majority of the festival started on Friday and ended on Sunday. So 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. kind of painting? Days, uh, I, I refer to it as a mural marathon because we painted <laughs> from 7 to like 9. That's crazy. Night, yeah. What's the process? How does this get... This is what, 40 feet high? How does it how does it get up there? How does how does that work? We all had scissor lifts basically, so uh, we could get up, get down however we wanted to. Um, it just uh, process. Uh, we just sketch them out and just get up on the wall. Well what's the what's the specific creative process? Do you sketch on paper first or do you sketch up on the wall? Me personally, yeah, I sketch on paper. Um, which is why my sketches look to sometimes totally different from the, the end product. Right, um, as you're creating, you just kind of go with the flow. Yeah, exactly. The wall actually makes the piece, um, which is why my sketches are never too detailed either. They're just like ideas, and then the wall dictates the rest. What inspired this one right here? Um, being on the canal walk and being on the, the James River. Like, I'm, I'm from Philadelphia, and the Scoople is a big part of the city. Um, and so I, I just was naturally drawn to the canal walk here yes. when I moved here. And the James, I don't know, it's like the heart of the city. So I wanted to do something that just reflected that. So you were born in Philadelphia, but now you live in Richmond. What does it mean to you to be part of the RVA Grooves movement where we celebrate the arts and culture in the Richmond region? Um, it, it's great, to be honest. It's, it's another way Richmond is exploring and uh, just celebrating art. and. That's what Richmond needs more of. Where can everybody find the rest of your murals that were are all over Richmond? Um, well, I have a, about three on Main Street, one on Broad Street. They're all over. I couldn't name addresses, but I mean, definitely downtown is where the majority of my pieces are. So Broad Street, just look for the ham. Look for the ham. <laughs> everybody, look for the ham. Well, it's great work. Thank you so much. Um, this is Jennifer Jules Hart with Ham for RVA Grooves, where we celebrate all things arts and culture. Coming up next, an incredible performance from Big Sam's Funky Nation. Hey, this is Jennifer Jules Hart with RVA Grooves, all things arts and culture. I'm with Big Sam's Funky Nation. He's about to get on stage. You How are you doing tonight? I'm not pretty good. What about yourself? I'm doing fantastic. So I, for one, cannot hear your music without needing to get up and start shaking it. You have a great infusion of jazz, funk, rock. Who's inspired you to be the artist that you are? Who's been your biggest influence? I mean, you have cats like James Brown. You have um, George Clinton, Pete Punk. You have Prince, um, Chuck Brown, you know, um, rest in peace. Um, a bunch of cats been my inspiration. So, you know, New Orleans, my hometown. Town, you know, um, we just have like our own gumbo of music, you know, so, you know, I have a lot of influences, so they come from everywhere, so when, once we get it out, it's just one big party, once you get it all out to the people, you dig? It is a big party, yes. Yeah. Um, how do you come up with your hit records? What is your collab, your, your process, your creative process? I mean, sometimes I might come up with a bass line first, sometimes I might, I might come up with the melody first, the, or the lyrics, just depending on what kind of mood I'm in, you know? Um, for instance, like I wrote a song called Ain't Number the Party, um, the bass line came to me first, and like, See what I mean? And I'm dancing, and there we go. Dancing, right on cue, you know? Yeah. Exactly, like, just the way we rehearse it. Right, perfect, and nah, go. Nah, but um, it's like that, you know, the bass line came first, and then like the lyrics just came to like, ain't nothing but a party, ain't nothing, ain't. and just like, just it just rolled from there, you know? So that's like one that I'm like, I'm definitely proud of that tune, and it did pretty well, you know? Nice, yes. Yeah. I love all your music. Yeah. RBA Grooves is a movement that celebrates musical arts, visual arts in the Richmond region. What does it mean to be a part of that movement? It means everything, you know what I'm saying? Just to be a part of our music history, period, you know? Um, because coming up, I didn't think I'd be playing music. I thought I'd be a basketball player or something, you know? Yeah, because most kids, I was a big guy. I was this size when I was in middle school, you know? Yes. So um, I thought I would be like a basketball player or something like that. But to, um, once I was 15 years old, I, I realized I had a calling for music. 
So I'm 30 now, so I've been running so 15 years. years. Yeah. Exactly. How it's long has, has Big Sam Smoking Nation been around? Big Sam Smoking Nation has been around for about nine years. Wow. But during that time, I was still playing with Dirty Dust and Brass Band. I was playing with Elvis Costello and Alan Tucson. Yes. Doing shows with Dave Matthews and just playing with a bunch of different artists. You've played with some of the greats, James Brown, Elvis Costello. Um, what collaborative, what, what new music do you have coming up? Who are you collaborating with next? Good question. Um, I talked to my homeboy, Chris Robinson, talked to G-Love, um, all those are my homeboys. I talked to them, man. We're all going to collab on doing some, um, some more songs for me, you know, so it'll be great get ready. to get, get ready. ready. Get ready. <laughs> you definitely want to get ready. How can everyone stay in touch with you? How can how can they get more Big Sam Funky Nation? They could join the email list on BigSamSpunkyNation.com. Um, I'm on Twitter if you like to tweet, um, at Funky Big Sam. Okay. And I'll you know, be following. Most definitely, I'll be following you as well, <laughs> you know. And um, go check out the fan page, too, on Facebook, Big Sam Funky Nation. Well, I'll let you get ready. You're about to hit the stage. I'm so excited to hear you. You're right. I'm a little calm right now, but y'all Just get hyped. Get hyped. It's going to be crazy out there, you know? Exactly. This is Jennifer Jules Hart with Big Sam's Funky Nation for RBA Grooves, all things arts and culture. Peace, y'all. Y'all be cool. That's a big hand. watching and make sure you tune in next week. RBA Grooves, all things arts and culture.
Hey!